Thank you for joining us, uh, Jesse. It's a pleasure. Absolutely, Sergio. Thank you for having me and helping raise awareness for this, this initiative. I'm thrilled to be here. My pleasure. Jesse, first, it's important to explain uh, what is it, uh, Green Space uh, Health. Yeah, so I'll give a quick background. Green Space Health is a mental health technology company. We we're born out of St. Michael's Hospital. Uh, and really, the goal at that point was to translate what's known in the research around measurement-based care uh, into practice in a clinical setting. And essentially, measurement-based care is the consistent collection of patient-reported outcome measures that <clears throat> clinicians and clinics then use to inform individual sessions, to understand what treatment goals are, to work with a client to understand what they're trying to accomplish and how they're doing in care, and then translate that into uh, data that they can be used, they can use for quality improvement and quality assurance. Um, we work with 350 plus clinics across Canada and the U.S., whether it's hospitals, health systems, private clinics, uh, to help them with their measurement-based care implementation and essentially bring the mental health space from a service perspective up to a similar level of quality of as every other medical industry where data is at the core. And so measurement-based care takes data, makes it clinically useful, and puts it at the core of our work. And that's um, where Greenspace started. But getting into this project, um, what we saw was an opportunity on campus with so much progress made over the last decade, let's say, around the conversation surrounding mental health, largely focused, uh, I would say, on a few things. One, reducing shame and stigma on campus, improving knowledge and skills of students to help support one another, and then providing access to high quality mental health services that help people with reasonable wait times. We've seen campuses, I would say across the board, make significant strides to better support the mental health of the students you have, especially around shame and stigma in education. But we haven't come nearly as far in providing students with high quality resources that they're aware of and are able to easily navigate to and are comfortable accessing to help improve their overall wellness. Um, so if you go down that road, there's a few consequential challenges, I would say, that still remain shared across almost all universities in Canada and the US. And so if I list those out for you, you would I would say students aren't sure where to go to get the help they need. So they may end up in the counseling center often as an example, when it may be another resource that's much more better suited to them, but they're not sure where they are and where to access them. Second is because of that, it puts professors and students in a tough position when a student may come to them asking to help with for help navigating care and they're not sure where to send them um, or exactly where to go. And then while schools often work to help students proactively think about mental health, there's rarely tools in place to help them get to know and understand their mental health better and help build resiliency before they're in a place uh, that they need support. And then lastly, uh, many campuses aren't able to collect meaningful feedback from students to understand the efficacy of the resources they provide and inform their strategic mental health resourcing decisions. So like as an example, they may run a focus group with students, but a wide range of data directly from students telling them what is working, what's not working, what their needs are, is much harder to collect. So that's where this pilot comes in. So I'll stop there, see if you have any questions about that, and then I can jump into the, the pilot side of things. What is the major goal with this uh, pilot project on campuses? Yeah, so we launched the Campus Pilot essentially to help solve those remaining, I would say, uh, challenges that exist across most universities and colleges in Canada. We're working with Lakehead University, Algoma University, the University of Winnipeg, and St. Francis Xavier Universities, as well as a couple others outside of the pilot group, to respond to the shared challenges and set the standard for campus mental health. And if we talk about goals, essentially each campus has a one-stop shop centralized hub with all the resources in one place that students need and where they can learn about their mental health and what affects them positively or negatively. And the goal of each one of those hubs is one, students know exactly where to go if they're struggling with their mental health and have an understanding of all the resources available to them. They don't have to search and find it when they're in a position of distress or in a moment of distress. They know where that place is and every student on campus should know where to go to get that help. Second is that students have immediate access to the care that is most relevant to them, and they can choose what that care is um, and have more agency in their decision-making process. Uh, the third is that students are empowered to build resiliency by proactively tracking and engaging with their mental health, and that's where the connection between 
our other work clinically within measurement-based care is if we can apply the benefits of measurement-based care in a clinical setting to the population health setting, we give students much more understanding of their own mental health so that they can, when looking for support services, understand what's going to help them based on the challenges that they're seeing. And then lastly, that campuses has have both qualitative and de-identified aggregate outcome data on the mental health of their student population and can use that to inform decisions about the services that they provide to ensure they're best needing the wellness needs of their student. And that is probably, uh, I mean, they're all uh, significant challenges and significant goals. That last one is big, is students are constantly looking to inform their decisions with student feedback, but garnering that feedback is very difficult. So that's one thing that this helps by having a one hub where pe people access the care that they need, but they can also work to improve their, their mental health overall. And schools can have a really strong understanding of their overall wellness of their population and what resources they offer are helping and what resources aren't helping or what resources students want to use versus don't want to use and can then adapt and innovate from there. And I think the amazing part of it is that we have four universities on board across three different provinces. So you have Nova Scotia, Ontario, and Manitoba, and that they're all excited to try to lead the way and significantly innovate their approach to mental health support and services. Why is it the mental health is so important? Um, mental health is an important one because one, I think it's generally a conversation that hasn't been uh, top of mind if you go back a decade ago, but we have made remarkable progress in getting people comfortable, uh, especially students, with reaching out and asking for help, acknowledging their mental health. And we know that not just students, but across Canada, people are struggling in a significant way with their mental health and um, rates are rising in regards to people that are in need of support. Um, more people are reaching out and asking for help, but it's not a one size fits all approach where um, the counseling center, as an example, is always the place to go. And if that is the place that people know about, um, the wait times are going to be significant. And so we need to put tools into the hands of people, and in this case, students, where they can better understand their mental health overall, like they would in other, any other with any other medical issue, um, and understand what they're looking for in regards to support. And so it's it's really the continued rise in, I would say, mental health demand of services, as well as people struggling with their mental health, especially on the back of the pandemic, where we saw people move away from social, like a, a more social world, if you will, and now they're transitioning back in and school is looking a little bit different. And it's a struggle for different people for different reasons. Um, and so we want to make sure that anyone has the support they need when they need it, but that we're also giving them tools to proactively work on and understand their mental health prior to needing support. And hopefully that avoids some people needing it at all because they can maintain their mental health in a better way. But for those that do need it, have immediate access to the care they need and, ha and have agency, like a you know, more personal agency over that care process and, and choosing what's, what's, what's right for them. Thank you, Jesse. Thank you. If uh, if anyone is looking for more information on the campus pilot overall, they can. We just put up a summary at greenspacehealth.com that they can check out, or under our solutions page, they can look at uh, population health and, and learn more. Thank you, Jesse. It was a pleasure, and uh, all the best. Thank you so much, Sergio. Uh, have a great weekend, and uh, and thanks again for having me. My pleasure.